Do you think it's a better scenario that citizens are right. being defenselessly run over by tanks from their government as opposed to a civil war scenario where they fight back? So because they're completely defenseless right now and they're getting bazooka to high heaven, yeah. you think they should have no way to defend themselves? <laughs> Top five lessons learned from Venezuela. Let me ask you this. What have you learned most from the story unfolding in Venezuela? Everyone's been talking about Barr. This has been a little lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Um, Nothing surprising. No, <laughs> right, they, yeah, they, exactly. they, they've really taught us a lot. So obviously they're, they're, they've reached a boiling point, right? Yep. Uh, the, the citizens have been staging massive demonstrations against the dictator Ma yeah. Maduro. And by the way, how do you pronounce the name of the legitimate president? Oh gosh, I don't know. Well, I know. Is it, Trump. Is, is Trump. it? Is it? Is it <laughs> we'll just say Juan. His last name is very hard for me to Juan. pronounce properly. Juan. President Juan. Gua Gaudo? I don't know. Why? I'm not going to work here But anymore. anyway, they've, they've been, uh, there have been demonstrations going on, uh, obviously, against dictator Maduro, who yeah. is um, not oh. recognized. So, the, so Juan, the other guy, recognized as the interim president <laughs> by both the United States, this is important to note, and other nations. Um, actually, I think we, do we have a clip and a freeze here yes, to freeze. show you what's going on? We, we just froze frame. We can't show it um, because they've been uh, running over dissidents with no. tanks. And yeah. Maduro is, uh, for people who haven't been following, let me give you a brief kind of history lesson. He's, he's a socialist turned dictator, uh, but I, re I repeat myself. <laughs> is that better? Yeah. Slaughtering <laughs> civilians. And, yeah. and this, is, this is what's so important. People say, well, huh? no, this is an example of pure socialism, okay? Yeah. The most tragic thing here is that it is entirely predictable. This yes. isn't the first yeah. time this kind of a government has run right. people over with tanks. tanks. No. Oh, and, and before you say that it's not true socialism, let me walk you through the top lessons we've learned as to why it is. Uh, Lesson number five, by the way, is that democratic socialists are going to hate lessons four through one. Uh, <laughs> hit the notification bell, and the bank bookmark the page, join up at Mug Club, by the way, because we're hitting, yeah. everything's demonetized now, yes, of course, yeah, subscribe on iTunes. Uh, so <laughs> the fourth lesson that I think is, is, is most important here is that socialism doesn't work. And I know Shocker. this is a lot of people say, well, this isn't, no, no, hold on a second. We're not talking about, about places like Venezuela. Actually, do you know how I know you, d Bernie Sanders and celebrities have long mm. praised Venezuela oh, yeah. and other South American socialist countries. Yeah. What They did it when their economies seemed to work. Way back in, what was it, 1961, they invaded Cuba. And everybody was totally convinced that Castro was the worst guy in the world, that all the Cuban people were gonna yes, rise up yeah. in rebellion against Fidel Castro. Right. They had forgot that he educated their kids, gave them health care, totally transformed the Killed society. Ah. You know, it's funny, sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. In other countries, what? people don't line up for food. But the rich get the food and the poor starve to death. Oh, he that. doesn't understand. His view is skewed because no, there's no lineup in the prune right. juice aisle. <laughs> By the way, when people argue that it's not real, so, do you know how I know that it's not true still today? Okay, Bernie still has an article on his website what? today, right now, that claims Venezuelans are living the American dream better than those in the United States. Oh to, my God. Today, right now. right now, right now, and I guarantee you after this show, they'll probably wait two weeks until this blows over and then remove it, and then you can time machine go back to today, <laughs> right now, this Thursday, what's the date? May 2nd. Thursday, yeah. May 2nd. May 2nd still says on Bernie Sanders' website, official website, that Venezuelans are living the American dream. Is that lining up for a toilet paper and having to eat dogs because you're starving yeah. to death? I don't remember that being the American the, the dream. The idea, you cannot, you cannot simply say it's not real socialism because it doesn't work now. You praised it. Bernie still mm -hmm. praises it. This is what you wanted. It's what you got. It's over. You're done. Screw your attempted pivot to Denmark. They don't want you! <laughs> By the way, Maduro was... He was elected. Yeah. yeah. If, if you say it was a special election because Chavez died, fine. So did Ch Chavez was elected. <laughs> yeah. You asked for the this. The scales people? were tipped a little bit by endorsements from one Jeff Spicoli and Bernie Sanders. Still pretty fair and free. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. leftists. You can't blame. You can't blame this on corrupt leaders. No. When your system, this is what the, the system of socialism is, what grants them unbridled power in the first place. Exactly. The fact yep. that a socialist turns into a dictator because you created the sole environment where he can become an all-powerful dictator is your fault. Yes. And we already did a video debunking uh, John Oliver's lies specifically on yeah. Venezuela, why it failed. You can watch it on the channel. Um, but let me give you kind of a brief summary off. for people who understand. They try and say, well, it's about the economy. No, okay. Venezuela, most oil rich country in the world. Yeah. One of them, more so yeah. than Saudi Arabia. A lot of people don't know this. Yeah. Chavez reserves. Uh, had the state run the oil industry instead of investing it back into the oil industry, right. mm -hmm. yes. investing profits Or back. the economy to grow other sectors. They used it to pay for a ton of socialist programs. That's yeah. why people liked them for a while, creating a bubble that burst when the oil market didn't do that well. So when people right. say it's all about oil, no, no. What was a road bump for the capitalist economies was an absolute disaster for yes. Venezuela.
Train and wreck. so before these protests, this is what's important to note. Right mm. now, you see them being run over with tanks and right. shot by their government. Yeah. It seems severe. But before this, they were starving. Give, they were digging through trash for food. Yeah. Predimata says it is the only way he can eat. No, no, no. At least we have not died of hunger. While yeah. he dislikes having to do this, he says he finds food that is edible. So, so socialism doesn't just kill people by running them down with, with tanks or shit. It, it starves them first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, third oh, this is, this is important. And I, I don't want to be simplistic, so let me let me back this up. Uh, gun rights are necessary for a free society. Essential. So oh. here you can see someone on MSNBC surprised, actually admitting that Venezuelans are completely powerless because they don't have huh. gun rights. You have to understand in Venezuela, gun ownership is not something that is open to everybody. So if the military have the guns, they have the power. And as long as Nicolas Maduro controls the military, he controls the country. Uh Uh Uh-oh, did I just say that out loud? That would never happen here, though. Come on. That would never happen here. Is it... Was that Tucker Carlson in a fat suit? <laughs> How did that make air? And here's the thing, I yes. know what people are going to say. That people have been saying this nonstop on social media. Like, what, and it's the, what they call the reverse nirvana fallacy. I think they call it that in either in either uh, rhetoric, logic, mm. or philosophy. It's yeah. hard to know which is taught in college. I remember I learned about this in college. Well, the idea we'll call that, it that. Well, hold on a second. They don't. They if they had guns, do you think it would fix the problem here? The government has tanks. Okay, hold on a second. Uh. So. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so let's before yeah. we get into the statistics so do, let me ask you this do you think it's a better scenario that citizens are right. being defenselessly run over by tanks from their government as opposed to a civil war scenario where they fight back so because they're completely defenseless right now and they're getting bazooka to high heaven yeah. you think they should have no way to defend themselves I, I, I don't understand the argument and by the way it's also incorrect with an unarmed population Maduro is barely hanging on to power yeah. okay if you dump 300 million guns into the mix He'd be, he'd be through. Yeah, they're doing right. great right. with rocks and bottles right now. Can you imagine if they were yeah. armed in any way? This is way? the idea. is like, well, they would just n- nuke. Well, no. no it, there's a ground war that needs to be fought. And right yeah. now, they are fighting without guns. And the yeah. Second Amendment is designed specifically. This is where people miss it when they talk about it being hunting. I, I know yeah. I sound like a broken record, but it's designed specifically to prevent this kind of government from even attempting yeah. this sort of tyranny. Yeah. Oh, but that would never happen here. Yeah, that's the, only, that's yeah, the next exactly. argument. It would never happen here. Never so let's happened. just never make really. sure that we have no fail safe. Take, take the United States, for <laughs> yeah. example. If you look at the numbers, we have a population of 320 something million people. Okay? Yeah. We have 300 something million guns. I think it's over 30%. Oh yeah, too cute Maddie has the overlay. It is, <laughs> it's, over, it's over 30% of households yeah. who own guns. Our total military population is just over 2 million. That's including active and reserve personnel. Yeah. There's no chance of the United States gunning down its people because they know the citizenry is so armed. It cannot yeah. happen. And if you think, I, again, you, you think that genocide is better in Venezuela than a civil war, I need to hear your argument when you yeah. say that mm. guns in the hands of civilians wouldn't help. I just don't agree. Just like we have a historical precedent for all socialist, Marxist, communist governments doing this, <laughs> do we have any kind of a precedent oh. for armed, pop, uh, armed populations fighting people? Well, Switzerland weren't invaded during World War II, and I know uh, some of you will say, well, they had a geographical advantage right. because of the mountainous regions. Oh, Okay, but you know what? Let's use another example. Direct quote from Japanese military. When they were asked why they didn't invite the United States after Pearl Harbor, said there would have been a gun behind every blade of grass. By the way, Japanese, very flowery. What's your excuse, Hirono? Don't you think I know how to do poetry? Give me credit. I give you no credit. None. None whatsoever. (laughs) This is is what's so important. It's it's so predictable. There's nothing unique about Venezuela. All. It, It would be, if you could find an exception, no. All big government and socialist leaders disarm their citizens. Yes. Every, Every Soviet every Union, Cuba, one. Nazi Germany. So socialism, with so, socialism, disarmament is the rule, mm. not the exception. Well, well lesson number two, this one is kind of an aside, but I wanted to include it, is that we learned that Trump isn't a Russian stooge. Oh, no. My important one, though, <laughs> so th- this is really simple. Putin has supported Maduro uh, openly and repeatedly. Yeah. Maduro was actually readying a plane, did you know that, to escape to Cuba? Yeah, he was out. Before, he was done. <laughs> before the Russians convinced him not to. And, uh, I don't know how. I, I, back in, in in January, Trump issued a statement officially recognizing one other guy, one, you <laughs> one other guy, one last name uh, as the interim guy. president of Venezuela. Guaido. And by the way, it's also important to note that uh, you know Russia's had uh, cozy relations with with Cuba, and if yeah. you look at Donald Trump and mm-hmm. uh, Bolton and their, their not only their sanctions but their, yeah. their rhetoric on Cuba, again, this just backs it up. But if you don't believe me. And I don't think you should believe me. You should never <laughs> Hold your believe feet me. to the fire. Don't a little believe bit here. me. Believe your lion eyes and believe your lion ears. Uh, here's President Trump meeting with one other guy's wife, uh, telling her that her husband is 100 percent the president. When asked about Russia, by the way, he couldn't be more clear. We are with Venezuela. We are with your husband, as you know, and we're with the people that he represents, which is a big 
big majority of uh, the country. Here comes. What sort of complications does the Russian involvement now pose? Russia has to get out. <laughs> what? All right, what's your next question? <laughs> Someone's in the Kremlin's uh, uh, Oh! <laughs> That's awesome. What do you think about Russia? <laughs> Scrub! They okay? <laughs> they All right. get out. Like, it couldn't be more forceful. <laughs> not only does socialism not work, but the macro really works. Socialism is outright evil, and I've talked yes. about this many times. Yes. It's not compassionate. No. Maduro's army, they're running people down in the streets, shooting them. Yeah. This is where socialism always ends. How is there yeah. any question as to this being pure evil? Venezuela, again, it's not an outlier. Nope. For the 20th century, socialist Marxist regimes have killed over 100 million people. Tell that to your edgy Easily. atheist friend who talks about all religions <laughs> being fought in the name, yeah. all, all wars being fought in the name, name of religion. religion. Yes. And I don't understand. Please answer me. How is this a surprise to anyone? If only we had the literal exact comparison of a Marxist out of control government running over dissidents with tanks in the history books. Is it, is it possible? <laughs> Somewhere, maybe. You starting to get the picture? And this is what this is no. the issue. We have to go to Rand Paul, uh, Senator Rand Paul in a little bit. Socialism, it starts with, it can only function with an entirely powerless and entirely defenseless society. And yeah. The two are different things. When I say powerless, I mean people who are reliant on the government for their health care, reliant yeah. on the government for their education, yep. reliant on the government for their welfare, for their ability to live. You suck yeah. the soul straight from somebody's body. And when I talk about defenseless, I'm talking about systematic disarmament. And one, of course, precedes the other. This, this is one thing, too, that, that, that you can't, I think Thomas Sowell talked about this, you can't blame the leaders who seize control that you have willingly given it yeah, given yeah. to them. You can, at some point, maybe it was democratic, but guess what? At some point, it's not going to be. Let's not say Bernie Sanders is a Maduro. I don't right. think he would be. Maybe not the next guy, but it could be the next guy and the next guy and the next guy, and you're too far in yeah. because you're dependent on the government based on these policies because you thought you were getting a gimme. And he, let me let me something else here that I think is important to note. Capitalism is not flawless. No one here is arguing not. that. Free enterprise, of course, has its problems. But if I'm wrong, and this is the issue, the idea of, of dispersing power, of it not being centralized. If I'm wrong and Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos are corrupt and they become like Maduro's, you know what? A few, thousands of people lose their jobs. The economy is going to do pretty poorly. Yeah, it'll be catastrophic economically for a lot of people. If you're wrong, people get starved and run over with tanks. So if you're gonna take the lesser of two evils, let me know what you pick. Hey there, if you like this video, subscribe or click one of these videos playing in a box. You know what? Hit the notification bell because subscriptions don't really mean anything anymore, especially if you're not 18 or older, at the very least, logged into YouTube as 18 or older because sometimes people are 25 but they don't know how to use the YouTube system properly and then you never, just hit the notification bell or you hate yourself.